You have gonna... all kinds of promotions coming out. Of course. Now. All right, let's take this call. Good morning. You're on Angelo's show, I think. Good morning, Angelo. How are you? Fine, fine. Your name? Mary. Mary, where Tom's are you from, River. Mary? Tom's River. Tom's River? Yes. Okay. You'd like to speak to David? Sure. Hi, David. How are Hi, you? Hi, Mary. Um, I just have a question as far as the legalization of pot. I understand your view of it, but haven't we already had these issues with prescription drugs where the doctor prescribes this drug and says do not operate a vehicle, do not stay in bed, you're sick, but yet they still put us all in danger and go drive a car or go to work and operate machinery. Um, we've done it with tobacco as well where the warning signs are there, but we legalized it. You know, we've legalized alcohol, has some of the same adverse effects as marijuana. So why is the marijuana such a big issue for you as far as legalizing it? When it could maybe be controlled and those things that are added to it by the home growers? Mary, let me say this to you, not mm -hmm. to cut you off. I agree with you with everything, with alcohol, with cigarettes, with everything. Right. Let me let's get let's one thing at a time, Mary. And I know you understand this. Do you realize that if two airplanes, two jumbo jet airplanes, every day in the United States crash, every day, mm -hmm. it will not kill as many people that will die every day from cigarettes. Right. Just from cigarettes. Now, you know what cigarettes has over 4,000 chemicals, so and so and so and so and so and so. Right. Marijuana contains the same ingredients as cigarettes, but much more potent. Now, forget the accidents, whatever. If I can only tell you in all of my career, how many people just from smoking pot, the problems they have emotionally, the problems they have physically, the destruction when I was a cop, what I saw from people who were just smoking, now, it doesn't happen to everybody, of course, just from smoking pot, some of the things they did. Now, I'm going to tell you a story, one of many stories. I went on a job years ago. They sent me another guy on a job. We go on a job. We can't get in. We're banging on the door. We finally get in the door. There's a young young man sitting in the uh, living room. And his head was bobbing back and forth, back and forth, and back and forth. And he's pointing to the kitchen like this with his, with his hand. And I said to my partner, what is he talking about? So I said to my partner, see what he's talking about. I'll watch him. My partner goes in the kitchen. And there's a woman who had just been smoking pot, and we had found it had been laced with, uh, at the time, it was laced with a couple of things I'm not going to go into right now, but I know about it. She had just been taking her little infant out of the oven. Mm -hmm. she, so had, her baby. she had baked her, her kid. Now, this ain't unusual. I and other cops can tell you a lot of stories like this. Right. Now, let me tell you something. I can tell you stories of I just spoke recently in a treatment center and many of the people who are treatment center going through treatment telling me stories about when they were smoking pot what happened to them. They're nervous, they're neurotic, some, some, some of the pot is being laced with so many different things, with chemicals you would not believe. Now you say, why? Why do people do this? Why would drug dealers do this? You know why? Because it comes down to money. If you're smoking pot and you ain't getting the high you want to get, you're going to go somewhere else. So I'm going to give you some powerful stuff. So I might lace you with rat poison, which I've had many times. That's, that's the point I'm trying to make. If we are to legalize it, then we can also control how it's You can't control it. Put into you it. never control it. So Mary, you're, 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 you're an advocate for legalization of marijuana? Really Mary, let me say this to you. Forget, let me say this to you, Mary. If you control it, if you control it, remember one thing. You've got 4,000 chemicals in there. Let's assume you control it, which you can't. Let's assume that. You've got tar in there. You know what the tar in marijuana is? The same tar that you're paving the streets with. Right. You know what you got in, in marijuana? You've got cadmium. 
Do you know what cadmium is? Do you know what uh, carbon monoxide is? This is all in marijuana, so you control it. But you know what's happening? Now we've become a nation of idiots. We're all sick. We're all dying from different chemicals. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now, I, people, I people don't understand that. In a drug-free household, I have four children, and they are great students, great kids. They, they're wonderful. So I'm in agreement with you. I'm just playing devil's advocate with you because I'm in disagreement with the alcohol, the drug companies. I'm in complete disagreement with the government controlling everything. But you know, it's going to happen anyway. Is my point. Well, not as long as I'm alive. Oh, well, good for Not you. Not as long as I'm alive, Mary, let me tell you. Yes. Ain't nobody going to convince me. I'll, I'll go on welfare. I'll blow everything I got. I'll give up everything I've got before, before I commit to anybody else. It's not going to happen. And let me tell you something, Mary. Let's get to alcohol for a moment. Does every drinker become an alcoholic? Of course not. But every alcoholic started with one drink. Never forget that. Never forget that, Mary. And I, I try to teach people every time. Don't play around with it. You're going to get to like it, you're going to be sorry, and I've got so many. Look at the paper today, Mary, if you get a chance. Okay. Look at the ledger, look at the New York papers. Just today, drunk driver killed three women. Drunk driver going through a red light kills uh, four people in a car. Do you remember on Route 1 and 9 a couple of years ago? A, a cop, he was a cop, but I think he worked in a prison, I'm not sure. He was playing baseball. He went out with all the ball players. After baseball, he goes to a place. He's, he's having some drinks. He's on his way home. He'd been drinking. On his way home, Mary, there's six people, six immigrants who had just come from work. I think there was three women and three men. They were working in a restaurant. He jumps a divider. He was drunk, hits him. He kills six people and kills himself. They left something like 15, 16 children behind wow. because of alcohol. So I don't even want to talk about alcohol. It annoys me no end. I don't want to talk about social drinking. I don't want to talk about social... Uh, rec I, you know what term bothers me, Mary? What's recreational that? drugs. There is no such thing as recreational drugs. Exactly. You don't do drugs recreationally. There's no such thing. You're poisoning your brain. Exactly. You're polluting the brain. And Mary, let me tell you, let me tell your audience. You know what I want everybody to do now? And most of the society drinks. And that's why they get a little annoyed at me. Go, when you're home now, Mary, go in your, go in your other room and look, go in the dictionary. Look up the word alcohol. And you know what it says? It is, it is an inebriant. Look up the word inebriant to make you drunk. Look up the word drunk. And you know what it says? to poison your brain. Right. But you know what, Mary? People are not ready for what I have to say. And they haven't been ready. But I don't care. But I'm going to tell you a story, Mary. I have a sister who went through a living hell with her son, a drug addict for years. 28 years a drug addict. She had shock treatments. She had nervous breakdowns. She went through a hell. I finally got this kid straight. The greatest thing in the world was his mother after that, what he put her through. She's married 50 years. She comes to my house. She had no car. She had no house. She had an apartment. I gave her my car because I loved her. She became my mother because my mother died and she was my oldest sister. Uh -huh. She comes to my house. We had a party for her. No alcohol in my house. Sandwiches, whatever. The end of the night, she's in my house. She wants to go home. I said, why don't you sleep in my house? I want to go home. I said to my brother-in-law, my brother-in-law, Jim, I said, talk to you. He said, you know how your sister is. You can't talk to her. She wants to go home. They get in the car. They're coming down the Garden State Parkway. They're going to get off at exit 105. They live in Long Branch, a little apartment. They see a car behind him, zigzagging. My brother-in-law gets a little nervous. He pulls on the side at exit 109. At 109, this kid who was drunk, high, hits something, hits my brother-in-law. My, my brother-in-law's car spins around, hits the wall, blows up, blows up, and right near exit 109. I'm home. The state police call me and say, David Toma, yes, 
Can you get up to St. Barnabas Hospital right away? I said, What happened? Your sister. But we'll get up. I go up there. Helicopter coming down. My nephew was with me now. I got my nephew.